All right, if you're hearing about this for the first time, you may be wondering what is going on with Basecamp? What is Basecamp? What happened within their company? So Basecamp has been just a fantastic company for the last 20 years. They've built some amazing technology like Ruby on Rails. They've built some amazing products like Basecamp. Uh, they have written some amazing books on entrepreneurship, on remote work culture, and they've been contrarians in terms of how to build a business in the right way. They are heralded by a lot of entrepreneurs as visionaries in many ways. And so what happened over the last couple of weeks has just kind of taken the technology <laughs> ecosystem, Twitter certainly, by storm. Kind of no one really knows what to make of it. Internally within Basecamp, they had kind of a, a funny meme list of customer names. Uh, it's not quite clear how it started, but it kind of was secretly talked about and kind of festered within the culture and the company for a number of years. And, um, you know, some of the some of the names, some of the words were uh, were derogatory, were racist, were inappropriate, and it kind of built and built. And, you know, from the outside of I've, I've respected Basecamp and what they've done, I didn't see any of this. It kind of manifested itself with a big blog post that they published at the beginning of this week. They had historically been such a leader in terms of company culture and work culture and entrepreneurship. Um, when they came out with this blog post, it kind of took everybody completely by surprise. No one really knew what to make of it. And so the blog post outlined a couple things that were really like confusing. So the first was no more uh, political speech, no more um, societal speech. You're not allowed to talk about these on company tools and company products. Um, you can take those conversations outside of the workplace. Now, saying something like, you know, hey, try to take political conversations outside of the workplace, you know, some elements of that may be fine, but the way it was put in the blog post was very black and white, like none, <laughs> like no talking about society, no talking about politics. And the problem with that is most product decisions, most company decisions will touch on societal issues. You're building products for the benefit of society, for the benefit of your customers. You're setting pricing, you're setting hiring policies, you're setting company culture, you're setting decisions and those will impact employees in both societal ways and political ways. You know, how you deal with health insurance, how you deal with time off. These are all company issues. They're also political issues. They're also societal issues. Um, some of the other things that the blog post set out as new rules within the base camp culture, within the base camp company, was that they would no longer have any committees. Too many committees can obviously bad, be bad for a company culture because you can get bogged down. You're not actually making progress. You're just kind of debating things. But committees absolutely have a great place in company culture to allow voices that are otherwise marginalized to be heard. And you can imagine that this would be really disappointing and problematic for um, diversity and inclusion initiatives uh, and other initiatives for underrepresented folks within a company. Um, and so no more committees, um, no more paternal benefits as the blog post put it. So a lot of the things that were previously put in place into the company, things that people had expected when they signed on and joined the company as benefits were being taken away and pulled back in exchange for compensation. And again, sometimes compensation is the right thing. It's the right why, the right reason that people join and do things. But sometimes those benefits have a benefit outside of their monetary value as well. And so this was kind of a light switch moment where a number of things within the company immediately changed. And today, about a third of the company resigned, uh, which is just astounding um, and, and sad. Uh, I mean, I really feel for a lot of the employees because they joined a company that was really public in terms of what it believed and why it believed it and what it was doing. It was fighting for the little guy and it was um,
fighting against giants like Apple in many lawsuits and many conversations. And so a lot of the policies, they really felt like they were an about face, um, like they were disingenuous to the things that people believed. And that's a real shame for the company and for the employees, because Basecamp is such a well-known and well-respected uh, brand within the entrepreneurship community. Um, I'm personally just kind of bummed out by seeing this kind of transpire. I'm really hopeful that um, the founders of Basecamp, uh, Jason and David, can really reassess and, and hopefully correct and mend some of the things. You know, ultimately, I think a lot of the people who left, they're not going to come back. And so they really have to rethink and assess what they want and what they believe for their company, for their culture and values. and you know, how to set things right. You know, I have a lot of respect for Basecamp. I, um, I hope that they can come around to seeing how some of the things that they put in place uh, were the wrong policies, how it could have alienated not just some employees, but huge sections of society by how they approached and presented what was going on. And Ultimately, I hope they come around to recognizing their mistakes because that's what I think this was. Um, I'm otherwise a big fan of uh, of the things that Basecamp has done in the past, and I, I hope they do find a way um, to come around out of this. Um, I'm Greg Reyes. I talk about entrepreneurship, technology, and design. I hope I'll catch you in the next one.